Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to a new video. So today we are doing 8051 program for hex to BCD conversion. Yes, you know how important this program is. If you're doing any real world based application, if you want to display your result on the screen, or if you want to show your result on a seven segment LED, like how you see on railway stations, the time at which the train is going to come or on any kind of public transport meter, the amount of money or the number of counters that have moved or lifts or microwaves or any kind of seven segment display. What you see over there is decimal numbers. It's so common for teachers to ask a mini project, implement a digital watch. Now in a digital watch, the hours, the minutes, the seconds, they'll all be decimal numbers. But the calculations that you will do to produce or to show those hours, minutes and seconds, those calculations are always in hexadecimal. You're making a coffee vending machine. These are all mini projects where you want to display the amount or you're making a fuel station machine, right? All those values for the real world are in decimal system, but all those values when you calculate your program will be hexadecimal numbers. So what you need is a program that converts those numbers from hex to decimal, that is BCD, so that they can be displayed on the screen or on any kind of output. Are we clear? Like I always do before I teach something, I make you understand why you're learning it because that's the whole idea. We learn such good things in engineering, but we don't know where to use them because nobody tells us the main thing, where is it useful? So this program that we're gonna do, this logic that we're gonna create is required in every real world based application. You may argue before we start, I just wanna get one thing clear. You may argue that, sir, we already have an instruction called DAA. First of all, if you said that, if this came to your mind, I'm proud of you. Well, that means at least you know this much part of the subject, yes, in such situations, DAA helps, but DAA is decimal exist after addition. Correct. So it'll only help you if you got your result by doing additions, nothing else, no multiplication. There's no DA multiply or DA divide or even DA subtract. So it can only help you as long as you're producing all your results simply by addition. And you know, all operations are not at two numbers. You need complex arithmetic. So you need a simple way of taking any hex number and making it a BCD or a decimal number. So let's get on with it. Okay, now, uh, suppose I want to convert a number 25. 25 is my hex number. I want to convert into decimal. 25 is 37. First of all, do you know how to do this orally? Forget this. Our program will do, our logic will do, all that is separate. We are engineers. Come on, we should be very comfortable with these numbers. 25, H. So you do 16. You multiply the digits by 16, powers of 16. So 2 multiplied by 16 is 32. And 7, that's 5. 25, right? So 5 multiplied by 16 is to 0. 16 is to 0 is 1. So 5 multiplied by 1, which means simply 5. So your 32 plus 5 gives you 37. Understood? Suppose it was 41, just for the sake of argument, just for the sake of knowledge. 41. 4 into 16 is 64, correct, correct, plus 1, 65, okay. Uh, suppose the number was 64, come on, 64, so 6 into 16 is 96, plus 4 is 100. So that's how you convert hex to decimal orally. You should know, you can't look at your calculator, you can't look for your calculator the moment anybody asks you anything. You're an engineer, speak like one, okay. Now, so now let's see how will our program do it. Let's create the logic. 25, you want to convert this. Divide 25 by 10. Divide your hexadecimal number by 10, not 10H, okay, 10. So 25 was basically 37. Understand what I'm trying to say? Inside the computer, it is stored as 25H, but you know the value 25H is 37. You know it in the back of your mind when you're writing this program. So 37, when you divide by 10, you will get 3 as the quotient and 7 as the remainder. So you got 3 and 7. Now you'll combine the two and make it 37. So we'll say, one second, sir, what are you saying? You already had 37, you're splitting 3 and 7, then you're combining. Yes, but understand the point. You didn't have 3 and 7, you had 25. 
your number was 25H. Yes, its value is 37, but it was 25H. From that 25H, you want to get your digits 3 and 7 so that you can combine them, make them 37 and finish your program. Did you understand? So you will take your hexadecimal number, divide it by 10. You will get your quotient and your remainder. Are you clear? Your quotient is 3 and your remainder is 7. Are you now clear? You will get your quotient and remainder value. 3 is your quotient, 7 is your remainder. How do you do this? You are 25. You will take an A register. You know how to do division, right? I have just shown how the, what happens to the registers. You are 25, you will take an A register. You will take 10 and B register. You do div AB. You know division happens only by div AB. You know that, right? So you will get your quotient in A, which will be 3, and your remainder in B, which will be 7. Now what do you do? You want to make this 37. So this 0, 3, which is there in A, listen carefully. This 0, 3, you will swap its nibbles. Some people say swap. It's not swap. <laughs> you will swap the nibbles. So 0, 3 will become 3, 0. Are you clear? And then to that 3, 0, you will add your 7. There you go. 37. That's your answer. It's so simple. Stop being scared of programming. Whoever told you programming is tough. Yes, people in their lower semesters, they learned C badly or they learned Java badly or they learned any language that they started off with badly. And then they feel, oh my God, programming is tough. And they try to escape from programming. Oh, come on, probably 20 years later during my generation, yeah, some engineers would have. Not me. I love programming from school days. But yeah. During our times, there were very few schools teaching and very few students interested in it, but I had this keen interest. So anyway, anyway, that's a separate story some other day. So many people try to run away from programming. Don't do that. It is so simple. To code this will not require more than eight lines of code. And that will convert any hexadecimal number to decimal. When I say any, of course, there's a limit. Here, we, this program will work up to a result of 99. Whereas a true 8-bit hexadecimal number can give you a result of 255. So you need one more modification to this that will come. But first of all, let's test this logic. Let's be absolutely clear. Let's take another number. Suppose I had number 62. First of all, tell me 62 in decimal. What will it be? 16 into 6 is 96 plus 2 is 98. So 98. Are you clear? Now, how are we going to do? Tell me. Take your 62H divided by 10. You know 62 as a value is 98. When 98 is divided by 10, it will give you 9 and 8. 9 as the quotient, 8 as the remainder. So your 9 will be basically 0, 9. Swap it so that it becomes 9, 0. Add 8 to it. Produce your answer. Done. Correct? Once again for the last time. Divide by 10. When you divide by 10, you will get 9 as a quotient, 8 as the remainder. The instruction for doing this is div AB, your quotient will be in A, that is 0, 9, and your remainder will be in B, that is 0, 8. Swap A, swap A so it will become 9, 0. Add B to it, it will become 98. That's your final answer. Are you clear? This will work for any number up to 63. 63H produces 99 as a decimal number. So up to 99 this will work. So at least if you want to make a digital clock, you don't need more than this. Please tell me. Please tell me you understood it, right? <laughs> Digital clock. You have hours, minutes and seconds. Hours will never be more than 24. Minutes will never be more than 60. And seconds will never be more than 60. So no value is ever going to cross 99. So as long as you're doing a digital watch program, this kind of conversion will do the job. You're doing this for my AC? Fine. You're doing this for the lift of my building? Fine. It's not more than 99 floors. And so on. So these are the various applications where this will work. Now, if you want to take a bigger number where your number is a true 8-bit number, a true 8-bit hexadecimal number can be from 00 to FF. Since it is from 00 to FF, FF can be up to 255. 255 has three digits. Hundreds, tens and units. Our program so far works for tens and units. For hundreds, all you need to do is one more level of division. We divide it by 10, so I, we got our tens and units positions. First, we'll divide the number by 100, so that we'll get a hundreds value. Of course, I'm going to do that with example. Then we'll do coding of both of them, and then we'll run it. I wanted every student to first know the basics of hex to BCD conversion because it is so important.
You got it? I'm very happy. Now, you want to learn it for real 8-bit numbers. You want to do how, how to do the coding of this, how to test it on the simulator. You want to learn the whole 8051 subject and enjoy learning it. Don't just learn it for the sake of exam. Understand, you're an engineer. Tomorrow you are going to make projects, you are going to make embedded systems, you're going to get into IoT. You don't do it, people coming after you, the further generation, the next batch of students, they're learning IoT as a whole department of engineering. Do you understand how much smarter they will end up becoming? So if you don't catch up with this, it will catch up with you. Eventually they'll all go ahead because just because you were scared of programming, I'm not saying learn from me, learn from anybody learn programming, learn embedded systems, learn microcontrollers properly because this is what is going to drive the first, at least the first few years of your career growth. So the better you are at it and once your career grows full speed initially, then it takes off. So come on my website if you want to learn the whole thing, www.bharatacharyeducation.com. The link is given down below. Register yourself if you're a first time user. Once you register, you automatically signed in, select the course. You From the main menu, you'll see lots of courses, I teach lots of processors, controllers, etc. So select the course 8051, click the subscribe button. As soon as you make the payment, the course will become active. In that, we have covered so many topics, practically everything of 8051, right? From the introduction, architecture, pins, flags, addressing modes, memory structure, the whole instruction set. We've done about... 10, 12, 15 videos only on programming, starting from simplest programs of add, subtract, multiply, divide, going to sorting of series, finding the highest number, converting various forms, ASCII conversions, LCD, LED, matrix keyboard, A2D conversion, D2A conversion, all of these are with theory and programs, not just theory. What's the point of just learning theory if you don't know how to code it? Then we've done timer section, serial port interrupts with theory, with the programming. Those are hot topics. Um, if, if you're studying from exam point of view, those are topics that will give you maximum marks. So anyway, everything is there. You'll see the whole course, about 40 plus videos are there. With every video, you also get a PDF. The PDF is extremely elaborate, gives all the explanations, circuit diagrams, programs, comments. Wherever there's programs, there are comments. It's not just random code written. But at many places, I've even put in the algorithm if the, in case the algorithm is a little tricky. Plus, you get PDFs of Viva questions and PDFs of MCQs, uh, the new trend which has started, which is picking up. And I don't think many universities would want to go back to the whole boring written exams. MCQs are the right way of testing a student. So you'll get all of that preparation plus a certificate. Plus, most importantly, you get direct access to me. This is my WhatsApp number. Whenever you have a doubt, pick up your phone, text me a doubt. As soon as I'm free during working hours, I will definitely reply. Okay. Wish you all the best. I hope to see you there. We are continuing with this. All the best. Do well.